Okay, so here's a video on mouthpiece and bell care and cleaning for a trombone. Um, first thing is with a mouthpiece and the mouthpiece brush, I do this under running water and I only come up from the bottom while the water is running. I don't want to uh, go in this way and mess up the inside of the mouthpiece and I don't brush across the part that touches my face. I don't want to make little scratches there just running water and up from the bottom with the mouthpiece brush. I also can take a little dish soap or hand soap and get the crusties off with that. Sometimes your fingernail is needed if it's been a while, but nothing more than that. A little bit of soap, mouthpiece brush up from the bottom. To shine them up, I use uh, Wright's Silver Cream. This works great and you can uh, shine up your mouthpiece with a little of the purple stuff. It doesn't take much and it can get those, uh, those shank lines off or some of it <laughs> off. And it takes a while. The cloth turns black pretty fast. So you can switch to a rag. That will make your mouthpiece look better. You kind of get a coating of the silver cream on it. And this is turning black, taking the tarnish off. And that will look better after I switch back to water and removing this stuff. There you go. That might actually show up as different on the video. When it comes to your bell, if you have a traditional trombone bell, this is 1934, so that's traditional. What I mean is no valve when I say traditional. Um, you want to push this off evenly with your two thumbs. You can get in this position. You never want to have your bell against the floor and push down with one part while pulling up with the other part. Sometimes they can be stubborn and you have to walk a little bit back and forth. You definitely don't want to take those circles out of round at the bottoms and tops. So you don't want to do too much walking at the end. If you're being extremely thorough and you want to take off the old creams and oils, you can take a um, a rag that's not like a towel, nothing scratchy, and put some denatured alcohol on it. Uh, so a rag like an old t-shirt. This is an old um, doctor's, surgeon's outfit kind of thing. Not from me, believe me. A little of denatured alcohol. I used to use rubbing alcohol, someone recommended. I switched to denatured that people use on electronics and stuff. I'm not sure why exactly. Um, so anywhere, this is... Um, and the, the kind of tuning slide that has one tube exposed on each different part. So anywhere where the old oil was, I can grab where I put the, the alcohol on here and back on the main part of my bell, this tube right here. I don't do the alcohol every time. You could just do it with water. And that gets the old tuning slide grease off. Then I don't want to leave the alcohol on the raw brass, so I'll rinse it. Because the alcohol is not good for the raw brass. And before I reinsert this, I may want to swab it. I can swab this with a brass saver. They used to give you long and short ones. Uh, now the trombone pack only comes with the one long one, so you can use that as well. Get any gunk out of the inside of here with that. Um, if you happen to have the Brass Saver product for euphonium, then it came with one of these. A little bit of a harder stick that you can use for getting the old oil uh, old trombone, sorry, tuning slide grease off of the insides of this. And you can use it to get the old tuning slide grease off the insides of your bell. Now, if you don't have the extra euphonium part from Brass Saver, you can just use the end of a full size cleaning rod wrapped with uh, cheesecloth. Or, somehow I got a uh, 
smaller a miniature cleaning rod from something over the years and I've used it on my bell and I wrap my cheesecloth in like I did in my slide video where I shape this like an upside down V and the apex is at the top tip of that point goes in gets pulled through a couple of rotations I pull a flap over rotate again and I can use some of the denatured alcohol on it whether it's this or the big cleaning rod and get the old gunk off the insides of your tuning side. Okay. So there you have it. When adding tuning slide grease to your bell, I do this in a similar way that I do with my slide. Very little bit on your finger. Some would go on here near the bottom. And then you could do this single tube at a time idea where I'm now transferring the tuning side grease from the inner slide to the outer. And I could do that to all the tubes. If you have a bell with the valve section, then you're gonna to wanna to do everything that I just described plus oil. Now, I think people should oil these more often than they do. And the oil functions to clean it as well as lubricate it and anywhere there's metal touching against metal you're going to want to oil. Now people use different um, viscosities of oil. I have a few types of Hetman oils here and I'll show you the way that I learned which was using Hetman number 11 and Hetman number 13. I'm, I have one tuning slide out, the main one. I'm also taking off my valve cap And I was taught that number 11 just goes in one place. And that is down here while moving the rotor back and forth. And that's because this canister is the most metal against metal. So it's where the thinnest oil that I'm using goes. So I'm moving it back and forth while I get 8 to 10 drops in there. And I want the number 11 where there's the most metal against metal. And move that around. Then I was told to use number 13. Although there are other types. Um, there's 13.5 for thicker. And there's all the numbers in between Hetman makes. And, um, but here's what I was taught for my tenor trombones. I know bass trombone is to use his different, um, different oils for different parts of his valve. And there's different kinds of valves out there. But um, for this standard rotor, I was told to put a drop of 13 right here. And let that sink in a bit. Remember my valve cap is off, so I put it on the circle of the rotor. And I did this on other parts of Thayer valves and Hagman valves too, where you have anywhere there's metal against metal, like the ball joints here and the spring. And anywhere that there's rotation and metal going against metal. And then you work it in a bit and it already feels much better. It usually runs quieter. And that's how you know you should do it more often, I think. Here's a different rotor, just in case it looks different up here. It's pretty similar to the last one. So, but this one has the string. So, you know, anywhere there's metal against metal moving, I'm gonna improve it. Oh, that's nice and quiet with the oil. Cleaning out this receiver, whether it's with uh, the swab with cheesecloth or that euphonium attachment that came with my brass saver, careful not to mess up your valve. And also, when it comes to just making it look nice, um, a rag, again, not a scratchy kind, but like an old soft cotton t-shirt with a little water and no soap, no nothing uh, on the rag just to shine it up works great.